Section 1.8, Singular Value Decomposition. And singular values. All right. So, um, in section 1.6, we learned of eigen eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and actually, what that combines to be is it can be called eigen decomposition. So we learned that. For any matrix A, any square matrix A, it can be decomposed into A equals X lambda X inverse. <coughs> if A is a symmetric matrix, uh, which we denote differently as S, this can be decomposed into or factorized into Q lambda Q transpose. The only difference between these two is that here, the eigenvector matrix becomes orthogonal for a symmetric matrix. So that was eigen decomposition. And these matrices need to, to be square matrices. Now, let's look at a M by N rectangular ma matrix, rectangular. A. Now for this A, we can do something similar. We can factorize A into orthogonal vectors, uh, matrices with orthogonal vectors U and V transpose with a diagonal matrix sigma. Now similarly to the eigenvalue matrix lambda, Sigma is composed of, uh, it, it, sigma is a diagonal matrix with uh, the diagonal values having special meanings. And they are called, they're not called eigenvalues, but they're called singular values. And U and V are orthogonal matrices. They're sort of, uh, I, sh I, should, I shouldn't say orthogonal matrices uh, because they can be, uh, they are actually square matrices in the full version of the SVD, but in the uh, shortened or simplified version, they might not be uh, square matrices. So I mentioned that we call uh, square matrices with orthogonal uh, columns as orthogonal ma matrices. So let's just say these matrices have orthogonal columns, column vectors. And these vectors are called the singular vectors. Now I should note that the singular values are all positive. All right, so basically, singular value decomposition. This is SVD. Singular value decomposition is basically an eigen decomposition, but for rectangular matrices, uh, matrices with any uh, kinds of dimensions. We could say that. Now, let's go a bit further, deeper. Um, these singular vectors, where do they come from? How are we going to compute them? Uh, I'd like to first note that, remember that the singular vectors V are from the eigenvec eigenvectors of A transpose A. So if we do eigen decomposition on A transpose A, then we get V lambda V transpose because A transpose A is symmetric, right? So symmetric means, so if we 
transpose this, then it's A transpose A, right? Because this is transposed and this is transposed and their order are reversed. So that gives us A transpose A, which is the same as the original matrix. So A transpose A is symmetric because its transpose is, it is the same as itself. So this is a symmetric matrix. And I mentioned here that symmetric matrices will have orthogonal eigenvector matrices. So we can write V, V transpose here. Similarly, A, A transpose, if we do the eigen decomposition for A, A transpose, we will get U lambda, U transpose. Now here, I would have like to note that this V matrix will have a dimension. So A was M by N, right? M by N. So this is N by M by M by N, which is N by N. So this is N by N. Here, this is M by M. So these lambda values, these lambda matrices are actually different in dimension, but the diagonal elements should be the same. Now, uh, when we say, uh, when I said that we do the de eigen decomposition for uh, the A transpose A or A A transpose, then how does this become A equals U sigma V transpose? Now let's look at that. So here, we are looking for vectors that satisfy A V1 equals sigma 1 U1. So because A is an M by N matrix, the input vector that has been transformed by the matrix A will have a different dimension, uh, different size. This will be N by 1 vector, and this will be M by 1 vector, right? So the vectors will have different sizes, but still, if we look for multiple vectors that satisfy these equations, not dot 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 here, but dot 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 there, we can find R vectors, R number of vectors, where R is the rank of A. So we, uh, I can say that this can be proven that we can find R pairs of vectors that satisfy these equations. So these vectors V1 to VR are orthogonal vectors in the input space. And the U1 to UR, these vectors are orthogonal vectors in the output space. So if we use the concept of the four uh, the fu fundamental subspaces, we can think of the uh, V vectors sort of like, so these are the V vectors, uh, the subspace spanned by v the V vectors, but each of the basis for this vector space, the VIs, so to speak, those are orthogonal. And if we multiply A to those VIs, then we get the U's. And these U's correspond to these V's and these U's are also orthogonal by themselves. <clears throat> so we are looking for these vectors. And how are we going to find them? We're going to use what we mentioned right here, the eigen decomposition of A, A, 
a transpose a. So let's use that. So first, let's combine all of these equations into a matrix, just like we did for the eigen decomposition case. So now, a times all of the column vectors v1 dot 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 vr equals u1 dot 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 ur column vectors ui times sigma 1 sigma r. And then we can denote these matrices as v, u, and sigma. This is capital sigma. This, these are uh, lowercase sigma. Then from here, we can write a v is u sigma. And because we're assuming, we're assuming v are the uh, orthogonal vectors, we can write, uh, so v, for a matrix with orthogonal columns, V, V transpose becomes the identity. So we can write A equals U sigma V transpose. Now, I mentioned that we're, we are going to use the eigen decomposition for A, A, A transpose A. So if we write A transpose A, we can get, so, u sigma v transpose transpose and u sigma v transpose and then this becomes v sigma transpose but sigma is a diagonal matrix so its transpose is 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 the same and then we get u transpose and then u and then v uh, sigma and then v transpose and then this becomes v y, uh, sorry v sigma squared v transpose because u transpose u is orthogonal and so it becomes the identity matrix so now uh, just by using the assumptions of the orthogonal vectors in v and orthogonal vectors in u we have obtained the eigen decomposition for a transpose a which is a symmetric matrix which will have orthogonal eigenvectors, um, and it all fits. So we can say that the matrix V is the eigenvector matrix for A transpose A, which is what uh, we mentioned that it would be. And the eigenvalues are, so VIs are the eigenvectors and sigma i squares, because this is squared here, are the eigenvalues of A transpose A. We could also do a similar process like this for A A transpose to get U uh, sigma square u transpose and then say u are the eigenvectors and sigma i so u i's and the sigma i squares are the eigenvalues of a a transpose we could do that to get the uh, u vectors but i mentioned that the v i's and the u i's must satisfy a v i equals sigma i v uh, sorry, u i. So we need corresponding pairs of these. Corresponding, sorry. Corresponding pairs. And there is a uh, there is a possibility that the eigenvectors, the orders of the eigenvectors might be mixed in case of common eigenvalues. So let's say there's a double eigenvalue with eigenvalue 1. So 
sigma 3 is 1 and sigma 4 is 1 for some matrix. Then the eigenvectors before corresponding to those eigenvalues, their orders, the UIs and the VIs, may be mixed up. So we don't obtain the U's using this. We obtain the U's directly from these equations. Because sigma i is a scalar, we can say the ui is a v i uh, over sigma i. So, so now it, it becomes clear how we obtain the v's and the u's, the v vectors and the u vectors. We perform eigen decomposition for a transpose a, and then we get the uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So the eigenvalues of A transpose A are the sigma squares, but we root them to get the eigenvalues sigma. And then using the eigenvectors and eigenvalues that we obtained from the eigen decomposition A transpose A, we transform them by multiplying A to get the U vectors. And we mentioned that the u vectors are also, uh, u vectors are orthogonal. And I mentioned this is symmetric, so these vectors become orthogonal, right? We can select orthogonal vectors, right? So we, we do, uh, sorry. We, it's not that we can select or, uh, orthogonal vectors. The eigenvectors for a symmetric matrix become orthogonal, right? So V are, the vectors in V are all orthogonal vectors. So that's satisfied, but how can we check if the U vectors are orthogonal? If we uh, take the inner product of, let's say, Ui and Uj, then this becomes sigma i a v i transpose and a v j over sigma j and then this becomes sigma i and sigma j uh, these the, this is just a scalar value so we can set this uh, aside and then we can write v i transpose a transpose a Vj. Now here, we saw that v, the Vs are eigenvectors of A transpose A. And the eigenvalues were the sigma squared squares. So we can write sigma i, sigma j, and then Vi transpose. And then this becomes sigma j squared Vj. So then the matrix has been eliminated. We only have a scalar. This can be uh, divided with the denominator. And then we just get sigma i, uh, sigma j over sigma i and v i transpose times v j. But we know that these two are orthogonal. So this becomes 0. What was 0? The inner product of u i and u j. So the u vectors are orthogonal. Yes, you can see that. All right. So now we finally uh, found out how we can compute uh, the singular value decomposition. All right. So let's look at one example of the in the text, example three, find u sigma v for a equals three, zero, four, five. So what we do is what I just mentioned. Uh, we compute a transpose a, which is three, four, zero, five times three, zero, four, five. And then this becomes 9, 0 plus 16, 20. So 25 and 20. And then 
5 times 4, 5 is 20, 25, right? Uh, let's check. 9 times uh, 9 plus 16, 25. Uh, 0 times 20, okay. 0 times 20, that's 0 plus 20, and then 0 plus 25, right? This is this. And then we do the eigen decomposition. Uh, so 25 minus lambda squared minus 400. Uh, this is uh, so the A transpose A minus lambda I de uh, determinant is this, which is lambda square minus 50 lambda plus the square of 25 is, I believe, uh, 625. So minus 400 would be 225. And then we can say that, uh, what is, let's just use the law of roots. So then uh, 50 plus minus 2,500 minus 4 times 225 is 900. So that becomes 1,600. So this becomes 2 uh, plus minus 40, right? Ah, sorry, not root. Roots, one, six, uh, 1,600. So plus minus 40, which is? So 5 comma 45. So these are the uh, eigenvalues of A transpose A. So sigma 1 squared is 5. Sigma 2 squared is 45. Now let's find the eigenvectors V1. So if we insert 5, we get 20, 20, 20, 20. And then this, the V1 would be 1 minus 1, right? To make the, this would be the, it, this would be in the null space of this, right? And if we insert 45, then we get minus 20, 20, uh, minus 20, 20, 20, minus 20. So then V2 uh, would be 1, 1. But now, if we want to make them orthonormal, we would have to divide root 2, right? So we get these, these vectors, these eigen, uh, eigen vectors, which are now the singular vectors for A, right? Now, all we have to do is find the uh, singular vectors u. Uh, and I forgot to mention that um, in the singular value decomposition, we call these the left singular value vectors, and these are the right singular, ve singular vectors. So remember that. So we found the right singular vec vectors. Now we need to find the left singular vectors. So u1 was um, sigma1, uh, so av1 divided by sigma1, right? So this becomes a was 3, 0, 4, 5 times 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2, which is uh, so root 2, 1 over root 2 times 3, and then minus 1, right? But divided by root 5. So this would become, there's a root 5 additionally. So then root 10, 1 over root 10 times 3 comma minus 1. So that 
seems to be, right? Have I got this right? Oops. Right. Right? So this is right for the u1 and for u2. Sigma a v2 over sigma 2, which is uh, 3045 times uh, root 2, 1 over root 2 times 1, 1. And this becomes, uh, so, and there's also a, there's also here a divided by, so multiplied by root 45, 1 over root 45. So this becomes root 90, 1 over root 90 times 3 and 9, which is root 10 and 3 outside here, and then 1, 3 with this 3 divided. So root 10, 1 over root 10 times 1 comma 3, uh, 1 comma 3, right? So this is u2. And we can check that these are orthonormal. These are, right? 3 squared is 9 plus 1 is 10, right? So the norm of this vector is root 10, which is being subdivided here, right? So very accurately, we can see that the singular vectors the left singular vectors are all also orthonormal. Now, finally, we can say that the original vector A, 3, 0, 4, 5, becomes 1 over root 10. Now, the two eigenvectors 3 minus 1, 1, 3, times root 5, root 45, 0, 0, and then the uh, vectors 1 over root 2, 1, minus 1, and 1, 1. You can write it like this. <clears throat> now here, I've made a mistake. What is my mistake? Uh, I've made it like this. The second singular vector is larger than the first singular vector. But a key point is, by definition, we define the singular vectors so that the singular first singular vector is larger than the second singular vector, and so forth. So we need to rearrange this. Let's rearrange this. Rearrange. Arrange. <laughs> Sorry for my spelling. Rearrange. We need to rearrange this to become 3, 0, 4, 5 equals 1 over root 10. Now we have to change these two column vectors. So 1, 3, and 3 minus 1. And then we change these two as well. And we write root 45, 0, 0, root 5. And then also I made another mistake. This needs to be transposed. So I should have wrote. Uh, 1 over root 2. So we need to change these columns and then transpose. So 1, 1, 1 minus 1 and then transpose. But if it were 1, 1, 1 minus 1, if, even if we transpose, it's the same. So we can write it like this. Right? Am I right? Did I make a mistake? Seems right, right? Right. Uh, so when I compared it with the text, the only difference was that um, this vector was the signs were interchanged. So currently I've put 3 as the positive, so we can write it like this, or we can write, write it like this with this changed, and then if it's transposed, then this becomes minus. So there's a choice. Of the of the signs of the matrices, of the signs of the vectors, uh, but I think this is the same. the The resulting 
uh, multiplication should be equal to, to a. So it would be the same. So we've seen an example of computing the singular values and the singular vectors, the left singular vectors and the right singular vectors. All right? Now let's discuss the geometry of the singular value decomposition. So let's look at A, the matrix A, which is U, oh, sorry, U sigma B transpose. And let's assume A is a transform, transform matrix applied to vector x. Then, how can we analyze this transform? How can we decompose? How can we factorize this transform? We can factorize this transform into three components. So first is uh, Vx, V transpose x. So before we begin the transform, let's assume that this vector is, uh, is a 2D vector. And let's say, let's, let's say x is um, the basis, mat the matrix composed of the basis of a 2D sub, uh, vector space. So let's say vector space basis x. So we can write x, sorry, let's draw a better circle. We can write x like this and then say x, the two vectors are the basis vectors like this. So this is x1 and this is x2. If we apply v transpose, so this is x, and this is v transpose x. And v is, it was an orthogonal, it was orthogonal vectors, right? So because v is orthogonal vectors, in this two-dimensional two space, this is a two-by-two two matrix, so V transpose will also be a two-by-two two matrix. So let's say this is a two-by-two two space. So this is a two-by-two two ortho orthogonal matrix. Now we can say it's an orthogonal matrix because it's square matrix. And what were orthogonal matrices? They are either rotations or reflections. Right? We saw that. Now let's say it's, let's just say it's or rotations for, because it's easier to draw, right? So now we rotated these, these vectors from V transpose. So V transpose rotates the vectors. What does the sigma? Two. Sigma is the diagonal matrix, right? So it stretches or shrinks. It scales the, the basis ve vectors. So here it shrunk this vector and it stretched this vector. Right? And then finally, the u vector is also another rotation. So if we write it like this, again, it's being rotated maybe this time in this direction. So we can draw it like this. So this is also a rotation. This is a scaling. So we can say that in the two dimension, the singular vector, uh, singular value decomposition shows us that a matrix multiplication, a linear transform is the uh, 
combination of a rotation and scaling and another rotation. Right? All right. Now. <clears throat> Uh, what about when V is the same as U? What does that mean? That th then, uh, this means that w for one thing, the N equals M, so it's a square matrix, and then because these two are orthogonal, we can write it as Q, right? And then uh, we mentioned that the singular vector values are all positive. So all singular vec values are positive. So then the, because U and V are, are Q, we can write Q and Q transpose, and then we can write sigma, but these are all, um, these are all positive. So these are actually the eigenvectors for the uh, eigenvalues for this matrix, right? Because this is a similar matrix. This, if this is A, A is a similar matrix to this diagonal sigma with the positive singular values. So what does that mean? We have a symmetric matrix. This becomes symmetric, right? And then these eigenvalues are all Positive, so that means A is a symmetric, positive definite matrix. So that happens when the left singular ve vectors are identical to the right singular ve vectors. Now, just one more thing in the geometry, we can measure the degrees of freedom of the rotation and the scaling and the rotation. So for the two by two matrix transform, we saw that this, this rotation, so what did it do? It rotated this vector in, uh, along this amount of angle. And we can write the angle as theta, and that's one parameter, right? One degree of freedom. So one degree of freedom for V transpose, one degree of freedom. And similarly, one degree of freedom for U. Uh, U. And what was the degrees of freedom for the scaling? The degrees of scaling had two degrees of freedom, one for each vector. Combine that, we have four degrees of freedom. And this degree of freedom is the same as the number of elements uh, in the two by two matrix. So four elements, four degrees of freedom. We can see that, uh, we can see that degree of freedom in the matrix. What happens for the three by three matrix? The VT rotation, what is the degree of freedom of that? Before we look at that, let's first see the degree of freedom of the scaling. Of course, there are x, y, z dimensions, so three degrees of freedom. In the three by three space, the rotations, so the, uh, before I mention rotations, in the three by three space, the matrix will have nine elements, right? So we estimate, we, we assume that the rotations will ha need to have both three degrees of freedom to uh, be combined to get nine degrees of freedom. Do three-dimensional rotations have three, dimension, uh, three degrees of freedom? Yes, because if we draw the three dimensions, we can have rotations along this axis, rotations along this axis, and rotations along this axis. So these three types of rotations, often called yaw and roll and pitch, those have three degrees of freedom. So three, 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 nine degrees of freedom 
equals the nine elements in the three by three matrix. What happens for a four by four matrix? The sigma will have four degrees of freedom, which means V, T, and U must have, because there are 16 elements, must have six degrees of freedom, right? So we can, we can uh, assume, we can estimate, or we can infer that for a four-dimensional space, four-dimensional rotation space, we will have six degrees of freedom for the rotation. And it's very difficult to picture, uh, but let's just uh, agree that that will probably uh, hold up. Now, let's look at the eigenvalues, sorry, the determinant of determinant of the matrix A, which we can write like this. What is the determinant of matrix A? Actually, the determinant, so when we say determinant, this A is sh should be a square matrix, right? So we can't com compute the determinant for non-square matrices. So here, although we mentioned that the singular value decomposition uh, holds for any uh, matrix A, when we talk about determinant, we're talking about A, uh, square A. <clears throat> um, and for this A, uh, if we factorize A into U sigma V transpose, uh, in terms of the determinant, the determinant of A is the product of the determinants of U and sigma and V transpose. But we know that these are orthogonal matrices, orthonormal matrices, and these will have determinant one. We mentioned that the orthogonal matrices uh, have determinant one before, right? And so these orthogonal matrices are similar to uh, e to the i theta, things like that. Uh, if the, we, we keep computing this, the determinant does, the norm doesn't increase, right? Similar to that. So this has determinant one, this has determinant one. So the determinant of A is equal to the product of the singular va values. Until now, I've uh, mentioned that A, the M for an M by N matrix A, we get U with dimension, let's U sigma V transpose, but here we have R number of singular values. So this becomes an R by R matrix. So this would make this U an M by R matrix and V a matrix R by N. Actually, it's n by r, but it's transposed, so it becomes r by n. So this has been the current explanation, where r is the rank of a. But actually, if we can write it in the full form, I briefly uh, noted this, alluded to this before, we can actually write m by n matrix u and a m by r uh, matrix sigma, uh, sorry, not m by r, but m by n. And then a n by n matrix v, right? Because, as I mentioned, v was determined from the eigenvectors of a transpose a. And a transpose a is n by n. So the v uh, sigma squared v transpose here this should have n by n. But if the rank of A is R, the rank of A transpose A is also R, so the eigenvalues of this n by n matrix will only have R eigen, non-zero eigenvalues. So because only the R eigenvalues are non-zero, then this would mean that there's sigma 1 to sigma r, and then below that, 
these diagonal values will be 0. And then what happens for the uh, eigenvectors that correspond to these zero eigenvalues? We actually don't really uh, care what those eigenvectors, eigenvalues are. So we can write uh, the U matrix to be U1, U2, so U1 to UR, and then 0, 0, 0. Something like that. All right, so we noted that. And then one more thing, uh, which is good to know, deals with the so-called polar decomposition, which holds for any matrix A. We can decompose A as the factor, uh, we can factorize A as a product of S and Q, where S is a symmetric matrix and Q is an orthogonal matrix. How would we write that? So uh, this orthogonal, it may not be a square matrix, but it's a matrix composed of orthogonal vectors. And this we can write using the singular value decomposition as u sigma, and we insert u transpose u, right? We can insert that. And if we insert that, this part becomes symmetric. And then the v transpose here, this part is or composed of orthogonal vectors. Try to find the proof of this yourselves, but probably won't be too difficult. All right, so this is the, uh, I've covered most of the important aspects of the singular value decomposition, and let me just briefly give an introduction to section 1.9. PCA. Actually, in the uh, earlier sections of the PCA, section 1.9, it mentions, what it mentions is the Eckhart-Young theorem. And actually, this Eckhart-Young theorem was mentioned in Section, where is it? I was mentioned in okay. anyway, it's briefly touched on in uh, section, ah, yes, 1.8.2. So it was briefly mentioned in 1.8.2. So let me talk about this. Um, today, I won't give a proof. I'll just um, brush up on what it is. So, in the previous sections, we've learned that some matrix A can be um, described by rank one matrices. So, we, we saw in section, where was it? In section 1.2, right? So let's go back, let's review section 1.2.1. Um, uh, actually, this was regard, in regards to um, the multiplication of two matrices where we saw that A matrix, the column vectors of the A vector and the rows in the B vector uh, 
these can be combined to get a1 b1 transpose plus thing 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 dot 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 a n b n transpose right and these were rank one matrices where if this was n by n matrices these were n by n matrices then this was an uh, n by one vector and this is a one by n vector so multiplying these two would get n by n rank one matrices matrix right so just like this now if we have a matrix a we can um, we can present this we can represent this uh, a matrix as the sum of the rank one matrices but here now what we're doing is we're going to use the u vectors u1 sigma1 v1 transpose and of course the sigma values can be uh, can be selected out to be to be written as So it's better to write it like this, right? It's easier to see. So in our text in page 91, it, it gives this uh, equation. So R, U, R, V, R transpose. So we can uh, reconstruct A as the sum of these rank one matrices where the rank one matrix where each rank one matrix is generated is constructed as the product of the two left and uh, 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 of the pair of the left and right corresponding left and right singular vectors scaled by the singular value and let's um, define a sort of Kth order rank one uh, rank one reconstruction as u one v one transpose plus dot 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 up until only the kth rank one components. Now, what the Eckhart Young theorem is is a minus a k the norm of a minus a k is always same, equal, or smaller than the norm of a minus some matrix B, where B, the rank of B, is k. So what this means is, what the Eckhart Young theorem means is, so a k is a rank k matrix because it has k rank one components. B is also a rank k matrix, and a is a matrix that is uh, of a higher rank than k. Uh, so a k is an is a k component approximation of a, and this approximate the the. The, the size, the norm, the size of the error between A and this approximation is at least, uh, is at mo, uh, how should I say? The, I, I should frame it like this. The error between any different rank K matrix at B and A is at least the error between A and AK. So in, diff in, in other words, AK is the most closest matrix to A among all rank K matrices. So it's the best, uh, best approximation of A 
that can be made with only k rank 1 components. That is what the Eckhart-Young theorem means, and that is why the SVD is important. Because if we want to get a simplified version of A, if we want to get an approximation of matrix A with the minimum, uh, let, let's say, a certain amount of rank, then we can construct that rank K approximation using the singular value, singular uh, components, the, these so-called principal components. So these are called, the, these can be called principal components. All right, so that is uh, a connection to the <coughs> to the next section 1.9 which deals with principal components so let's continue in uh, our uh, studies uh, that go on to the next section in our next lecture so that will be all for this lecture